Okay. Officially rolling. <laughs> Here we go. I've got to get used to not having like a lot of people in the congregation before we start. You know, I get feeling like, well, more people should be here. But <laughs> anyway, no, not necessarily true. <laughs> so, we gonna start with that first hymn? Yeah. Okay. So rather than singing the doxology first, we're gonna sing um, number three forty-two, which is Rock of Ages. So we don't hear the video. If you'd like to stand, you may. <laughs> Give a good stretch. <laughs>
You had one more. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> I'm well. That's good. As am I. Well, happy to be here. Hey, I say hang in there. The best is yet to come. Yeah, that's a good attitude. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, along those lines, uh, the next hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. So, much, much different pace of um, yeah. singing. There, too, if you, everybody sit down. If you want to stand and sing it, you may. <laughs> That's why people use the three-quarter time tempo. And and uh, I always got the biggest kick out of people talking about quote-unquote Christian music as if, you know, you're sitting in Christian hues because you're made out of Christian tree wood, yeah. or Christian wood from Christian trees, right? Yeah. Garbage. Anyway, um, saying the, you know, talking about syncopation. Um, who, who used to be on TV? The cousin of uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, that has the big bar. Yeah. Mickey Gilly. Mickey Gilly. Gilly. And cousin. then their other cousin, Jimmy Swagger. Yeah. And Jimmy Swagger, He's still on there. who could play, you know, piano just like Jerry Lee Lewis, he was talking about syncopation. And syncopation is bad. It's a three-quarter. And he was talking about three-quarter time being something satanic. I'm like. You've got hands written in three-quarter time, okay? Anyway. 
Jason likes swimming. Jimmy Semprager mm -hmm. watches him. He has his own television network. Yep. Yeah, television network. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yes. <laughs> He's had three. <laughs> All right. Chapter 3, still. Be thankful you don't, be thankful Pastor Corey's not doing this. It, it took him two months to get to chapter 3, I think he said to me. He says, wow, you're rushing right through it. So. That's Corey for you. That's Corey for you for sure. Yep. Well, Corey is... Corey's fun to watch because he rejoices in the word so much. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. He just exults in it. And, uh, well, it. There's a reason you have a Pastor Dave, and there's a reason you have a Pastor Corey, and there's a reason you have a, a Jimmy, and there's, a, you know, yeah. there are a lot of different people that need to get touched. And, mm -hmm. um, Look at you go over to the Weiss Market and you go into the ice cream section and you're just going to see the No, no, all kinds of all yeah. kinds, all brands, all <laughs> so. textures. Yes. Taste. One of the things I find um, people tend to, to not bounce information off of other information. I don't think. I think they tend to take bits of information, mull it over, and then move forward. They don't like to review often, I don't think. And but if we review, we have to think. Yeah, you do. Um, but as we go through Scripture, it's like, well, what are you going backwards in the Bible for, Pastor? Right? I want to dip back into chapter 2 a little bit. In verse 17 of chapter 2, our friend Paul is saying, Behold, thou art called a Jew, and retest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, comma. And I probably won't go too far, because Paul's full of commas. Not that he originally wrote commas, but can you imagine reading this in the original without the punctuation? No. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> no wonder no wonder Peter's writing what, what Paul writes is really hard to understand sometimes, right? He says it he says it in his epistle, Peter does. Behold, verse 17 of chapter 2, behold thou art called a Jew, and retest in the law, or restest, excuse me, rests in the law, and makest thy boast of God and knows his will and approves the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind a light of them which are in darkness an instructor of the foolish a teacher of babes which has the form of knowledge and of truth in the law thou therefore which teachest another teachest thou not thyself Thou that preachest a man should not steal, do you steal? Here is, here is Paul's legal argument. Um, I want to say that we're Jews in the sense that we are Israel, in the sense that the meaning of the name Israel is those who wrestle with God. And we all wrestle with God. Therefore, I feel it's perfectly fine to consider ourselves Jews according in the context to what Paul is writing about. Does, does that make sense? Is, is that clear to everybody? Well, I'm not Jewish. No, I'm not talking about either the ethnicity or the religion. I'm talking about the spiritual state that we're in. Okay? We are Israel in that we struggle with God all the time. We wrestle with Him all the time. Children of Israel, Hebrews, Jews. We're Jews, right? When people uh, 
what was it, uh, Mel Gibson's new movie, The Passion of the Christ came out. Uh, people were railing like, about the point that that Mel Gibson seemed, in his directorial version of The Passion of the Christ, to seem to be blaming the Jews. Well, you blame mankind. No one group is responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now, the way it worked out, technically, it was the Jewish, the temple priests who killed him. I mean, they had to get Rome's permission but Rome would have just as soon signed off on the whole thing and let Jesus go. Right? Yeah. No, I killed Jesus. I don't blame any ethnicity. I don't blame any nation. I don't blame any people. I did that because he died for my sins. That was his, he was the payment for what I've done. Paul writes about it, right, in chapter 3. You know, he's, he, Destruction and misery are, their, are in their ways, the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's our natural way of going about things. And Jesus changed that for me. So that payment could be made for the remission of my sins past. Remember that verse? We went over that last week, right? Stuff you've done, he's covered it. What about the stuff you're going to do? He's covered that too. He's covered that too. But. <laughs> There's a big butt in that. <laughs> it can sit on five chairs. That's how big that butt is. Okay? But. If you go about things the way. Some people do, figuring, Shh, Jesus paid, paid it all. I can pretty much do whatever I feel like. I'm justified to feel how I want. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and you rest in the law and make your boast of God. Well, how does, I can pretty much do whatever I feel like. I'm justified. Sound like boasting of God. It doesn't, does it? No. No. My my idea of what a boast of God would sound like would be pretty much what Sister Gladys said earlier. The best is yet to come. God has provided it for me and will provide it for me. And all those who believe in him, on him. Boasting, and here, another of my favorite books. You could use this for a car blog. <laughs> Maybe not. Boasting, well, who's, what is boasting? Here's what the dictionary says. To speak of in ostentatious language. What is ostentatious? Not to get political, but we've seen a couple of governors in this state who are kind of like that, all right? Let's, let's just say we've, high we, we've seen it. High 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 Ostentatious. Well, they all want to be like They've got sometimes. grandiose schemes. Just, you know, they think more of themselves than they should. Ostentatious language to speak of with pride, vanity, or exultation, to brag about, to possess as something of which one may be proud, as the town boasts not less than five churches. <laughs> and I think it's hilarious that this dictionary has that example. <laughs> we have five churches! That's an, that's... Ah! Okay. That tells you Sorry, I had a Sam Kennison moment. Um, older, how old is that dictionary? How old is the dictionary? How old is that dictionary? Pretty darn old. That's pretty darn old. That's pretty darn old. Yeah. If you want because to put anybody. 1966. The only reason I say that is because very rarely will you see a town boast about five churches. 
There's still some towns that will, yeah, Very you know. <laughs> I mean, towns that are trying to build up. The, yeah. This is a nice place for your family to move to. I mean, their chambers of commerce will come up with pamphlets that say stuff like that still. So, I mean, there's, but yeah, most of them will say we have a nice strip mall, we have a nice plaza, we've got eight bars, we've got, yeah. oh yeah, and we've got five churches. <laughs> Hey, if you're going to put anybody on a pedestal, put our mothers on the pedestal. Look what they put up with. No, I'm not putting my mother on a pedestal, no. <laughs> People aren't supposed to be there. No. Amen. No, we should we should get rid of pedestals, period. Can I we God? want to boast, we want to boast of God. All glory due to him. I hate pedestals. That's what people used to put pastors on until they screwed up and then they had to run away in the middle of the night in shame. Right? No. We're all... Uh, back to Romans. Right? No one is... All have... Sin. Sin. And fallen short of the glory of God. And thank you. All. That means all. That means every one. All have fallen short. And none of them deserve pedestals. Do they deserve awards? Do they deserve thank yous? Do they deserve some praise? Yes, if somebody has done something magnificent or helpful or even just, you know, fun. They deserve laurels. They deserve applause. They deserve thank yous. David Stewart, thank you for what you did. David's very careful about that because Sometimes he gets nervous. He's, he's thinking, if I thank him about something, that means I'm taking away a reward he's supposed to get in heaven. Well, you know, screw that. I'm thanking him now because mm -hmm. he's helping me now. And I know the Lord's smiling on me and is going to bless him double anyway. Right? Because yeah. he's boasting on God, not himself. No, oh, no, don't thank me. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to thank you because... What you did for me was wonderful. You know, and Bill, and all of you guys at one point in time, Steve, one time or another, you have done something wonderful for me, for my family, for our church. And I want to say thank you. Now, is that a boast? No. Thank you. Now, people talk about, I'm, I talk with other people about my church and the people in it and everything, and sometimes I'm a little boastful. But I've got a wonderful crew here talking with other pastors. You know, man, your church, for the few people that you have, you continually come up with programs and things that are just wonderful. I've got a church of 200 people. I can't get six people to get together to form a dinner. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. So I get puffed up a little. I see my people are hard workers. They, they all wear like six different hats, my flock in this church. And yeah, I, I want to say there's times when I, I'm proud of you, but the pride is not prideful. It's thankful. If I think if we can reevaluate that feeling, Right? Your kid does great in the ball game. I'm so happy that she is really enjoying this. And yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little proud of her. I'd love to see her do a good job and take, take such passion and enjoyment from it. That's not quite so much pride. That's quite more like exaltation and a, and a common feeling of good, right? doing well. How y'all feeling? Good? That's great. I feel better because of that. Right? It's not so much vanity in that. It's, it's a shared uplifting. It's a shared encouragement. And this is what the body of Christ really should be about. I mean, you want to go back to different lists in the Bible about gifts of the Spirit? What are some of those gifts? And you, you practical Bible students can answer this one. What are some of those gifts of the Spirit? Gentleness. Gentleness? Faithfulness. 
Encouragement. Meekness. Huh? Meekness. Meekness. Yeah. It's because we don't come by it naturally, right? Yeah. Yes, patience, long suffering. <laughs> yeah. Faithfulness. No, but encouragement, lifting up each other. Right? How do you do that? Best way I know is prayer. You know, Lord, and I do it. Lord gives Steve a really good day today. Yeah. It might be that short. But I want to remember him to I want to lift Steve up. But I want to lift Seth, David, Glad, Joy and Julie. Jason. Is there, you know, working with Jason. I, I want to lift all of you up. And that's my boasting. All right? And Paul writes about boasting. He was one of those guys that could boast about a lot of stuff. He was an incredibly well-educated person who wasn't smart at all when he was Saul of Tarsus. What was he when he was Saul of Tarsus? When Paul was Saul, he was a zealot. Does that mean he was a stupid zealot? No. 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 He was just as smart as a zealot as he is when he's writing this. There's one huge difference. He had education upon education. He obviously knew how to write. He obviously knew how to argue and debate things like crazy to the point where he's aggravating. <laughs> right? What a brain this guy had. Not only that, he was a citizen of Rome. He was highly placed among the Jewish leaders at this time. He had a lot going for him. And he was a zealot, yeah. We see it all over the place. It's on the, t it's on, well, I don't know how many people watch TV anymore. It's on whatever tube you watch. They're all over the place. On all sides of different aisles, people say across the aisle, there's 80 aisles, stop. They're all over the place. And they're smart, and they know a lot of stuff, and they have every right to boast. And what did it take to get Saul of Tarsus spiritually Paul? It took God knocking him down and blinding him. And then giving him real instruction. And it came in my mind, when he was on the ground, he suddenly had a data download unlike anything anybody has really gone through much before. He suddenly got this whole story of Christ and why. And I believe, and I, I, here, let me get out of the pulpit because this is just <laughs> my theory. I believe it was a split second. And when Paul said, or when Saul slash Paul, what was the first thing he said after he got knocked down and was blinded? My God, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Why do you? Why do you forsake? No. No, persecute. He knew. But the Lord was a peculiar type of Lord to use. To him at that time, so he was still kind of relying on old information. Even when he got suddenly this new information, bam, like that. Then he had to get taught. Right? Mm -hmm. He had to go and he had to go and learn more about what God wanted him to do. And God set him up with the specific teachers that God knew would get him right, get him going. <clears throat> Paul had a lot to boast about. He never forgot his old stuff. But suddenly he had all this new information, this new God-given spiritual information that absolutely took his life and went, BAM! Upside down, backwards, and showed him precisely how wrong he'd been in all of it. Huh? 
He's been wrong. You don't get much more wrong than him. With all his smarts and all his citizen of Rome, big, big shot in the church, you know, people, people saw Saul of Tarsus come down, they either got scared of him or they're like, wow, this guy is, shh, don't goof with him. Be serious stuff. God changed all that. The Holy Spirit came into Paul and changed all that. This is, Paul's very smart, but do you know who else is really smart writing this letter to the Romans? The Holy Spirit. Because what Paul is, Paul is writing is inspired by the Spirit. Because he wants so bad to try to teach us. He's reaching through the ages because he knows. He knows about Dave Cook. He knows about Amy. He knows about Rome and their struggles. And he wants to try and, here, listen to me. Listen, listen to God. Listen to what God has given me to tell you. He's prophetic. Chapter 2, verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and rest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. You know his will. Proves the things that are more excellent. <laughs> Being instructed out of the law. Which we know that's not the Jew's place, right? The Jew is instructed in the law. So he's talking about a different kind of Jew than the Hebraic people that were walking about in, in Paul's time. He's talking about the future Israels, us. <laughs> and are confident that you thyself are a guide of the blind. A light of them which are in darkness, meaning you are no longer in what? Darkness. If you're ready to be like Saul, if you're ready to be changed by the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, that he's drawn into you. So now where's boasting? We go back to chapter 3, and I want to get it precisely half of the verse forward. So, so this is for Pastor Corey. I took a great deal of time on this one, too. <laughs> Where is boasting, then? Chapter 3, verse 27. Where is boasting, then? Is it, it is excluded. By what law? Is it excluded? By works? No. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, this gets very confusing because Paul goes back and forth on this thing, and oh my lord, it's hard to hard to eco. Why is the law here? Some people say to keep us safe, right? To keep us in order, right? To guide us. I mean, that was really for Israel. That was that was the intent of the Mosaic Law. It was instruction for living. Do this, don't do this. Eat this at certain times, and and not this, and you'll be healthier because you're not eating the pig. You're eating the Brussels sprouts or whatever, right? Don't have bacon four times a day. <laughs> right? Don't get the triple bacon cheeseburger. Get, you know, have a salad. You don't have to have it every day, but because I'm going to give you some rest of time where you can go and tithe and eat all the triple cheeseburgers you want. Right? That's one of the Old Testament tithes, by the way. A version of that. <laughs> but mostly... Have a salad. You're going to be healthier for it. Your body's going to work better. You'll, you'll live longer. You'll be happier. You won't walk around with, you know, 800 extra pounds on you. In other words, don't be an ass. <laughs> don't be a stupid donkey. <coughs> be a creature that I've created that can be intelligent. That I can help being more intelligent. 
Where's hosting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Everything that you do. Can you boast about it? Of course you can. We had a wonderful, successful gents, gents gig last night. I played great. No. We, the band, played great and people loved it. And it felt so good. Now there's the boast. And it's outward. Did I play great? Sure. But that was part of it. That was his gift. That's God's gift. I didn't create my ability to play great or not great. I've been given a gift. I don't get paid for playing music. I get paid for working in the field. I get paid for the rehearsals. I get paid and not well. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid for setting up my equipment. This was the first time in a year and a half, well, yeah, about close to a year, where I stood and played for three hours. And I was really glad for the boots that I bought with the better support. <laughs> right? Because God made me smarter about that, too. I used to just have my flat Chuck Taylors. No support at all. And by the time three hours is done, I'm like, oh, I can hardly walk. We had a great time. It was so much fun. Praise God. And people, oh, we have, we did. <laughs> but where's my post? You see? You see the point here? Is it of what I did? No, it's the gift that God gave me in the first place. Sometimes we have to go backwards in our understanding and go, wait a minute, <laughs> this is, <laughs> none of this is my doing. Now, I have talents, you have talents, you have skills and skill sets. And to be a good steward, right, a good husbandman, a good farmer of those things that God has given you, you work them, you practice them, you don't let them go follow. You, you try to be wise about how to take care of yourself, how to practice, right? Um, don't walk around like a no mind. That's a one key, right? Um, stop walking around with a frown on your forehead, though. Be open to new information as it comes by. I like to think of it as walking around this world like a child of wonder. And boy, there's a lot I wonder about. <laughs> and I know you all do, too. You can't do much about it. Why not boast of the one who can? Can God change things? Not when he feels like it. But most of all, he wants to change you. So that you react to things differently. Where is boasting then? Is it, it is excluded by what law of works? No. But by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, but in that is an implication in verse 28. Not the deeds, you know, um, without the deeds of the law, but largely without deeds, period. It's what you do, who you are, Sometimes we get that confused, right? And people think it was, oh, I'm sorry to be picking on you so much, Steve. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of it today. Huh? I'm getting a lot of it today. I, I, I'm, <laughs> That's what I'm here for. But I'm using it as an example, though. When people think of Steve, they think of mechanic. Yeah. Or they think of post office worker. Was well, that who you are? No, that's what you do. I drove my brother Todd um, to get his blood work done. He's, he's coming out of the. I was looking for the blue car, and we got the mud wash, the, the other car. Um, so this 
Where'd you get this one? I said, this was a gift from, this was a gift from Steve. The guy in church. He gave us this. He's been, he's been keeping us. He's been taking care of us. Oh, wow. This was a gift. I was, I was boastful of you in that respect. So Steve, Steve's a good guy. <laughs> well, I guess so. Yeah. You know? But that's who Steve is. He's a guy that takes care of people. Who's, right? Now, can he boast of that? He probably ought not to. I mean, I'm certain there's times when he goes, you know, I did pretty damn good today. <laughs> right? But it's there's times when we have to think about it. Is what we do who we are? Who are we? Well, we're supposed to be creatures. We're supposed to be followers of Christ. And again, backwards into chapter 2. Are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? That's who we are. That's who we're supposed to try to be. That's who Israel was supposed to be in the first place. That's why they were given the word in the first place. And what did they do? They screwed up. Which is why Jesus had to come in the first place. And why the Holy Spirit is quenched so often because we ignore the Holy Spirit and we do what we feel is right. We feel that we ought to boast. We're not meek. We're not humble. We don't follow Jesus often enough. We don't. I heard last night, oh, you don't need to wear a mask around me. I said, yes, I do. <laughs> Oh, really? Why? Because I care more about you than me. It's the law. No. no it's it's not the, the law. <laughs> the law. It's not. <laughs> it's the point that this has always been not about me. Why does a person want to be pastor anyway? Get rich? Well, some, some do. I'll, I'll, I guarantee you some do. And man, are they boastful. Right? And I can name names, but I probably shouldn't. They love their jets, and they need another one. Boy. <laughs> nah. Man, and I work so hard at not hating those cats. I really, I just, some of them, oh, I just, the Irish works up, right? And I just, whoa. <laughs> you don't care a whit about your flock, and you're fleecing them, and you deserve every bit of hell fire you're going to get. And that's not a good place for me or anyone. It's not healthy. The law says that Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers, blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who don't think like that. <laughs> right? right? Open their mouth and stick their foot in it. Peter, they're going to arrest Jesus in the garden. Peter whoosh, cuts the guy's ear off and Jesus goes, no! <laughs> and Peter goes, what? Yes! <laughs> I'm going to stop this turkey. I love you. I hate him. Yeah. He's me. Toast. And Jesus went, no. Picked up the guy's ear and healed it. Yeah. And how do you follow a clown like that? The Holy Spirit allows you to follow that clown. To the world, you look, you're going to look clownish. The book says so. You're going to look real stupid. All of the intellect and the good stuff that Saul Tarsus had before God made him blind and knocked him down to the ground was nothing. 
nothing. God's instruction from that moment on meant to Paul everything. Everything. He says so. And he understands we all fall short. We need each other's help. There is no boasting. We can't do enough to make ourselves that good. Our boasting should be of God. We are justified by faith in He who justified us and is justifying us further. Is He the God of the Jews only? No. No. <laughs> is He the God of Baptists only? Nope. Is He the God of Christians only? Nope. Be really careful what you think. Be really careful of all the information, just like Saul of Tarsus had, and he had volumes of it. Be very, very careful what you do with that. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Whatever name you want to put on the Gentiles in this day and age, call them what you will. Be careful what you think about them. Just like I work very hard to be careful what I think about preachers that are fleecing their flocks. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, you know what? That would be me. I've got, a, I've got a, an ego that big, I'm pretty sure. I can be disenchanted with people in general. I couldn't I could not care about you guys a whit. You know? And just be fleecing you for the, the hundred and fifty a week. <laughs> That's I'm putting on the offshore account. Cayman yeah. Islands. Nobody knows about it. Cayman Islands. Only I've actually put it in Wales, so that I'll tell you something. Oh, boy. By the way, thank you for people who bought my book because Proceeds of that, I was able to make really nice donations to the uh, Royal National Lightboat Institute, which their job is to go out and save lives. <laughs> I'm telling on myself all the time. I want to help. I want to save. That's what Jesus cleaned me up for. That's why Jesus saved me in the first place. That's why he's really trying to kick my ego out of the equation. And it, it works from time to time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Where is boasting then? Where do you want to take it? Heavenly Father, as we continue through this book of Romans that points at us and very often accusingly help us re-examine exactly what you said on those sermons you gave on the mounts and in the fields and to your disciples and in front of the people that wanted to kill you, in front of those religious leaders. Help us go into your word and look at those words again to remind us because sometimes I think we like to be boastful of our memory and our memory really stinks in actuality. Help us look to your word. Help us hear your Holy Spirit, the wisdom that cries for us three times. Help us not act like those who have no faith. Meaning, give us the strength to care for others first. As your son did, before the Last Supper, when he washed his students' feet, the creator of all we know in the fleshly body of Jesus Christ, and he washed his students' feet. That ought to knock us off our horse and blind us for a while. Make us rethink what it is we think we know. It's been doing a number on me for a couple of decades now, Father. Approximately six of them. And I thank you so for it. Bless each of your priests here. Give them the strength and the goodwill to go out and 
help people, to uplift each other, to keep each other in prayer. I thank you, and I give you all praise, honor, and glory for these things that will come. In your name, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, in the name of the Holy Spirit who empowers us, amen. Interesting choice for the last one. Oh, by the way, on the little desk in the back, we have new information cards from Bethany of Boston. Yeah. yeah. I've been talking about this girl for months now. Yeah. We get to meet Bethany of Boston. Yeah, cool. You must have yeah. not been here when we did Missionary Sunday. So we'll pick this up. Um, there are uh, offering plates in the back should you care to shed some shekels for the workings of our church and the feeding of the ferns. <laughs> yeah, right. Motors. And, uh, have a good week ahead, please. And, and remember this. And if you're feeling frowny or upset, take a look at it. Ask the spirit to go with you. Dive in, the water's fine. Yeah, try uh, washing each other's feet, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that you'd ever want to wash my feet. I think you'd pass out. <laughs> no, I really don't. No? Uh, no. Okay. Crush your washer. <laughs> Fire hose! <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, you know, as a mother, <clears throat> most mothers have seen and, and touched and smelled all kinds of things. <laughs> so his feet yeah, yeah. don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> there was one time that I saw something that had dried on the wall. And my kids were like, oh, mom, no, don't touch that. Like, oh. And I said, well, really? Like, what haven't I touched already? He's like, you know, honestly. <laughs> does not even face me. I just wanted to say when he was saying about going into the Bible, and he kind of said it as he was walking by, but you know that asking the Spirit to guide us uh, makes all the difference in the world. Like for me, if I just randomly open the Bible, I might maybe get something from it, and I think God honors that we were, are trying, but I think if we take a moment and say, okay, really help me know what I should be looking for, help me have something here, I, it just makes all the difference. So I just thought I'd add that as somebody who's been feeling kind of depressed through this week and feeling mad <coughs> at myself that I was feeling depressed. So I just, yeah, I just thought I'd add that. If you think about Jasper, you could pray for him. Who's that? Jasper. Okay. Not, yeah, not okay. So um, our last hymn is How Great Thou Art, number 147. Can you stand and sing?
played the note Marion used to sing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> One day we're going to hear her voice, loud and clear, <laughs> along with all the others who've gone on before us that we love so dearly. Oh, God, that's going to be an incredible gig. <laughs> that's going to be really saying, Thank you, God! <laughs> the heart to love like that. That's what he's given us. The heart to miss people like that, that's what he's given. The heart to go up and help change lives that are so hurting and in trouble and in danger, that's what he's given us. He's given us the strength to do miracles. If only we would do what we need to to get it done. Let's keep the fight up, huh? Pray for each other hard. We need it. It's a rough world. But by God, we can do it. Heavenly Father, bless each of your priests, the ones you have chosen specifically to give to your son. Empower them. Strengthen them. Keep them stable in their boasting on you. And keep all of our egos away from wanting to boast on us. Amen. Mm -hmm. My young friend would have me say, thank you all for coming, now get out. <laughs> <laughs> she loves that. <laughs>